Hi guys, in this video, I'm gonna take you through how to realistically retire early with property investing, because let's face it, there is absolutely no shortage of property trainers and channels out there that paint a rosy picture of how easy property investing is. And take it from me, as someone that sells no property training courses, but has spent the last decade plus building a UK wide home buying company, nationwide estate agency, and my own personal property portfolio. Investing in property has changed my life. It's made me a millionaire, but it is also really quite challenging. And at the same time, it certainly isn't a get quick rich scheme, but it is an incredible way to build wealth and financial freedom if you're willing to do it properly. I've split this video into three key parts. One, why property? Two, how do you get started? And three, how can you start with little money? You can skip between chapters if you wish, but I'd highly recommend you watch from start to finish if you're serious about property investing. Section one, why property? Now forget prices going up and down this year or next, or even what interest rates are doing right now. Those things disrupt short-term pricing of property, not long-term. When we all know that house prices have never dropped over a five or 10 year period, and that is how you should approach property investing as a long-term 10 year plus investment cycle. There are two main reasons why not only I invest in property, but why the likes of Lloyd Bank aims to be the UK's biggest private landlord by next year. Why BlackRock has raised hundreds of millions of euros to grow their portfolios. And those two reasons are reason one of two, supply and demand. The reason property is so popular is basic economics. It's supply and demand. Our population is growing faster, mainly due to immigration, than the rate we are building homes to house people. We all witnessed how the war in Ukraine dramatically limited the supply of oil due to the ban on Russian oil and how that then dramatically pushed up all our prices. It's predictable supply and demand. And in reality, this is what has been happening to the property market, obviously less dramatically, but over decades. The blue blocks in this diagram indicate buyers and sellers that are growing in volumes, and the red blocks indicate buyers and sellers that are falling in volume. So simultaneously, as there is a shortage of properties being built relative to our population, we have an ever-growing market of investors and companies like BlackRock and Lloyds and many, many others that have looked to UK property as an excellent opportunity to invest, which is then making it harder and harder for those at the bottom of the ladder, like first-time buyers, to have any chance of buying it to begin with. That ironically creates a bigger guaranteed market of lifetime renters for those buying up the property to rent to for decades in the future. I'm not saying this situation is fair in any way. It is the reality of the government mismanaging how they influence the supply and demand of property. And all we need to do is play that game. Reason two of two for why to invest in property is it's low risk. We can predictably forecast for the next 100, even 200 years, everyone is going to need somewhere to live. You can't predict if in 100 years, we're all gonna be using iPhones, for instance. So it is an incredibly safe parking space for capital, rather than buying shares in companies that may not exist 100 years from now. Risk in property investing doesn't come from the property itself, it comes from the debt mostly you take out when you buy a property. So when people say property investing is risky, what they're really saying without realizing it is the debt aspect of property investing is what creates risk. Because in reality, if you bought a property for cash, you are then insuring that property and then renting it out. And if you don't want to handle the tenant yourself, you can outsource that to a letting agent to manage for you. Not only do you then have a property going up in value over decades due to supply and demand we just talked about, you've also got regular positive cash flow coming in in the form of the tenant paying you rent. Better yet, if the property burnt down, you're insured, your money's protected, your assets protected. Comment below where the risk is in that, other than if you need to sell for some unrelated reason. But if you buy stocks in a company, and the company goes bust, well, that's not insured, you've lost your money. 
So look, investing in property is really all about getting hold of as many assets as you can, which is getting increasingly hard to do as the inequality between the rich and poor widens and the middle class in the middle shrinks in the middle. Again, I'm not saying that this is fair, but that is the reality of how the government has managed our property market, how governments have managed our property market. Section two, how do you get started? So I'm assuming at this stage, you've listened to all I've had to say. If I'm lucky, you've liked this video and subscribed to my channel. And you're thinking, great, how do I get started with this whole property investing thing? I've broken this down into four clear steps. Step one, you've got to educate yourself. Like with anything, you need to determine where your skill gaps are. If you're a complete newbie, watch all my videos. As you do that, watch other property educators' videos and build your baseline of knowledge. Consider reading books on the topic and even select a property investment community to become a part of. If you're completely new to property, it's worth Googling local property investor networking events in your area and go along and simply start by observing and just soaking up as much knowledge as you can. You wanna network with people that have achieved what you want to achieve and that will help build your confidence and knowledge base. Step two, understand what you can invest. Now you're educated, you've got to know what you can play with financially as your budget, as that will be a big, big influencer on assessing what you can invest in, what sort of property strategies will make sense dependent on the sort of returns you're gonna to wanna to be making. A great way to do this is if you're planning on using mortgages is to have an informal chat with a mortgage broker. If you don't know who to use, I've got links to mine in the description below, they're brilliant. But ultimately an experienced mortgage broker would have had this discussion a million times before and will be able to give you an education of what you can borrow dependent on what property investment you have in mind. It will give you a good foundation to go into the next step which is step three, choose a strategy and target area. There are a lot of different investing strategies with property. And the most important thing is to establish a strategy that fits your goals and to commit to it with structure. Most people will be aware of the standard buy to let property investing, which is more straightforward, but generally less profitable. On the other hand, you can consider other strategies like short-term lets or holiday lettings or even HMOs that take more managing but generally generate far higher returns. Importantly, you need to decide what patch, what area you want to target because ultimately holiday lets, for instance, might work brilliantly in one place but not at all in another place or a standard buy to let property might yield brilliantly in one area but terribly in another area. Step four, make decisions based on data, not feelings. Buying property investments is not like buying your home. You're going to be making decisions based on the numbers and nothing else. You have to clearly establish, one, what is the property going to cost you? And two, what is it going to produce you as a percentage return? If the deal doesn't stack up to the returns you know you need, by educating yourself, speaking to a mortgage broker, studying a strategy, then move on to the next property. Section three, how can you start with little money? Some of you may be wanting to retire with property investing, but will have little or no money. And I know there are a million and one videos out there that claim you can be a property investor with no money through strategies like deal sourcing, rent to rent, and option agreements, amongst other things. And quite honestly, all that stuff is 100% possible, but like with anything, only if done properly. For instance, my property sourcing business, which you can check out in the description below, generates seven figures a year of revenue by sourcing 100 plus properties for investors every month. If you want me to create a video explaining how to get started in property with little money, then comment below because I only want to make it if you guys want to watch it. In the meantime, if you're interested in learning more about property, I'll see you up here.